Okay, well, welcome. It's uh, This is Apostle John Welty with Second Eighth Week Ministries, and today is uh, June 26, 2011, and uh, coming to you from Walford, Iowa, in the United States. We'll be picking up here where we left off in 1 Peter chapter 2. Uh, actually, I just had some thoughts I was reflected upon here as, as just getting ready for the assembly that I thought I'd start with, uh, which is from Ephesians uh, chapter 1, verse 6, which, which reads, To the praise of the glory of his grace, uh, wherein he has made us accepted to the beloved. Uh, and I was, I've was i been reflecting upon uh, the growth of the fruit of the fruit of faith within the heart of the believer, you know, as and as concerning uh, while watching a, a tomato plant grow, actually, and just, you know, look, uh, reflected upon the work of Christ as I was making some observations about, uh, you know, what we see there. In, uh, in you know the natural growth uh, growth from a seed to a plant uh, you know the, the the taking of roots uh, you know the, the roots growing deep that, that takes place which forms the foundation and it's the same thing as concerning the incorruptible which we've been talking about here in first Peter the incorruptible seed uh, having to be laid within the soil but that seed can't be cut off as we talked about that seed has to remain uh, it has to remain rooted it can't you can't continue the uh, dig it up and replant it, dig it up and replant it, which would be like being double-minded or, or constantly shifting from one foot to the other, which you see people uh, who, you know, have uh, embraced a wide variety of philosophies in order in hoping that uh, one of them might work for them. You know, like you see people that have uh, a crucifix and a rabbit's foot and, uh, you know, this and that and these and those all on their keychain, right? You know, um, a, a dream catcher from the mirror of the car, that type of situation. Okay, but for that seed to grow and for that, that plant to grow, it has to take root. In order for that to take place, it has to remain settled. Okay, so also a truth. Okay, that, that, uh, that incorruptible seed uh, has to do with, uh, with, that, with that knowledge of Christ, okay, which, which we, we must receive in, in pure form. Okay, that has to do with truth being, being set within the heart, which is, what, uh, which is what apostles are called to do, right? To oversee that, that laying of that foundation of truth within the hearts of the believer. Okay, and also to oversee their spiritual growth. Okay, because not just does the seed have to be planted, but the seed needs to come into uh, continuous uh, contact with those things that are necessary for its growth, right? It can't be cut off from the sun. It can't be cut off from moisture. Okay, it requires both the light and the heat from the sun. Okay, it also requires cycles of growth. Okay, it can't be in nonstop sun. Okay, there are cycles that must take place, right? There has to be a day and a night. Uh, and there has to be seasons for these for these things to take place. Okay, so also we see with with the work of Christ uh, in our soul and the cycles of growth that we go through, where we uh, where we go through uh, cycles or seasons also. Okay, and yet we must we must remain in daily and continual contact with with Christ. Okay, partaking of of the bread and the water. Okay, and that light of His grace, um, which continues to to nurture his his fruit within the soul okay and just as you see this plant which began as a seed okay and it and it as it as it begins to shoot forth it's, it's really interesting i was watching a time lapse on a tomato plant growing the other day uh, and you watch it you know it begins to shoot up out of the soil okay so that it, and then it begins to open up and and spread out leaves in order to increase the surface area that it has for for gathering Okay, uh, expo you know, it's increasing its exposure to the sun. Okay, the same thing happens with faith in the, in the heart. Okay, that which is birthed within the heart, okay, continues to expand, and as it expands, it requires more and more grace. Okay, just as a, as a plant, the larger it gets, it needs more water. Okay, it needs more light in order to sustain its growth because it's it's a larger organism right now, right? Okay, same thing with faith in the heart. Okay, so your appetite for grace will increase. Okay, as you continue to partake of the grace of God through the sanctified tools of the covenant. Okay, as God continues to grant you that access, he continues to provide for that measure okay, according to your faith. So that your faith can continue to grow from grace to grace. Uh, as it's incredible how the Lord does that. So, uh, But as, as these leaves begin to open up and the exposure begins to increase... Okay, so then there's new there's new branches that come out, and they also increase leaves, and so it, it, there's a multiplication taking place. Okay, and then you see that it it comes to the point where it begins to flower. Okay, which is which is that seed uh, is resulting in that fruit being birthed now. 
okay and as that and as that flower opens okay giving off that that fragrance okay uh, which is very pleasing okay so also is the birthing of the fruit of faith within the heart very pleasing to the not in the nostrils of god okay that scent is the scent of christ okay? which is not something that we can perceive uh in uh, you know with our noses okay but that scent is very real okay? and it's taking place and it's very pleasing to god okay he desires that sent within the garden of our souls. Now that our souls had fallen into a state of corruption apart from Christ prior to our coming to the covenant. Okay, and that and that produced a stench. Okay, like a landfill. Uh, but but this the smell of Christ replaces that stench. So you can see where there is uh, where God takes great pleasure now. Okay, in the soul because the soul is now reflecting Christ. It's reflecting the work of Christ and it's and it's giving off uh, the uh, uh, evidence. Okay, of the pre the presence of Christ. Okay, that you can that the scent of Christ is present, right? Okay, that's not possible apart from Christ working within the soul. Uh, and as this this flower it, it continues to mature, okay, it matures into the fruit. Okay, and the fruit then, okay, is as the virtue of God. Okay, the the, the fruit of faith, being in continual contact with 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 the grace of God, with His truth, okay, with His government. Okay, with all things that Christ has provided through his headship, right, in order for the growth of the body of Christ, which is the church, okay, the body of Christ is the church. Uh, so for the, the growth of his body, okay, and Christ being the head of that body, okay, uh, everything that he's provided for that, then we come into daily contact with these things, right, and that which is which was initiated by uh, the planting of, of the uh, incorruptible seed within the soul, Okay, it results within uh, a great many uh, multiplication factor of fruit. Okay, which which is which is this this fruit of faith has matured into his virtue. Okay, and these contain the seed, don't they? So there's so you can see where this results in charity. Okay, because now there's a spreading or a distributing a distribution taking place. All right, that this one seed can actually produce thousands of seeds. And those seeds can be can also be planted, and each of those can produce thousands of seeds. So you can see that there's a perpetual increase through the work of Christ. Okay, this is why the heart has to be enlarged by the work of the Spirit. Okay, in order to bear more fruit, because this is taking place within our souls. Okay, not only does this take place within our souls, but this takes place through our lips, as our lips drip with the virtue of God. Okay, that uh, as we speak charity. So also our other co coming into contact with this knowledge. As they come into contact with this knowledge, the grace of God is present to draw faith into their hearts. Okay, because the Spirit of God is working with this knowledge, right, in order to draw faith from the heart towards uh, from from those who believe uh, into covenant with God. Okay, that they may come into contact with Christ, and that this work may may take place and continue within their souls as well. Right, which is which is how the body of Christ continues to increase. Right? This is the same thing that was being taught by the apostles here. Okay, this is what Paul was talking about in Ephesians: the praise of the glory of His grace. Okay, not just because uh, you notice in the gospel that's being preached, uh, you know, the, the, here in the world today, uh, the grace has been reduced down to God's unmerited favor. Okay, this isn't what Paul's talking about here, though, is he? He's talking about the praise of the glory of His grace. Okay, so that His grace is is, is resulting in fruit bearing. Okay, that fruit bearing is maturing into his virtue. Okay, and that this is resulting in an, in, in an increase in the body of Christ. Okay, this is this is praise to the glory of his grace. This is glorifying God. Okay, there can be no glorification of God apart from uh, apart from godliness. Uh, there can be no glorification of God apart from holiness. Okay, there can be no glorification of God apart from sanctification. All right, and these are words that are that are very strange in the ears of most people. Uh, you know, most Christians today uh, who are yet unconverted believers, all right? They, uh, they believe in God's existence. They believe that Jesus is the Son of God, but they have yet to have the foundation of truth laid within their heart, right? And therefore, they remain confused about what the, what the purpose of the priesthood is, okay? They remain confused about uh, how, how they know they're saved. I remember asking that from uh, very early on, uh, what it would have been a long time ago now, but... Uh, it was prior to coming to covenant. I remember asking the pastor of the church that I was going to, okay, how how you could know you were saved. I just you know finished reading the Bible for the first time, and uh, I told him I said, best I can tell, 
you know, I'm kind of confused about this because it seemed to me like you could spend your whole life thinking you're saved and you're not. And he says, well, you know, the fact that you're concerned about that means that you are saved. And I said, well, that's, that's not really very reassuring. You know, there's, there's no uh, assurance of my hope there. Uh, and I was very perplexed by that. Uh, and of course, you, you certainly can know what it means to be saved and whether you are saved or not. Okay, because you, as you're experiencing the work of Christ within the soul, there's tangible evidence uh, of Christ working in you. He's not working in you uh, in, in vain. Okay, he works within the soul okay, in preparation for receiving the soul back to himself. So, uh, you know, the reason why there was confusion concerning that was because I was, I was seeking help from uh, the blind. So it was the blind leading the blind. Yeah, because he uh, he had not come into covenant with God and did not have the foundation of truth in his heart, so he was trying to function in in uh, his his you know the, the Lord had, had called him as a pastor, but he was trying to do that without first having the foundation of truth within his heart. He wasn't prepared to serve God, okay, uh, as an elder uh, as an elder in the body of Christ. Uh, but let's get in here to First Peter chapter two. So this is just something I've been reflecting on the last couple of days, but. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, and I believe we left off here in verse 11. So let's let's go there. So 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11. Which reads, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshy lusts, which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, uh, they may by your good works, which, uh, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Verse 13, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors, as unto them which are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well. Uh, for so is the will of God, that with well-doing you, uh, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free, and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as servants of the Lord, or as servants of God. Verse 17, honor all men, love the brotherhood, uh, and fear God, honor the king. All right, let's go back and take a look at that. So when he says, he's uh, dearly beloved, and I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, okay? He's talking about that we are strangers and pilgrims to this earth, okay? We're not strangers... To Christ, we're not strangers to God. Okay, uh, we are strangers to uh, the carnal-minded. Okay, because they see us as as odd. All right. Now, there, there's a lot of carnal-minded Christians, and they see those who are embracing truth and keeping covenant with God, okay, as odd. Or even, uh, you know, they'll, many of them will speak out against us. All right, and they'll, they'll lash out against truth. So it's not just that they see us as odd, but they see us as a threat. You know, because truth uh, challenges um, the imagination, and they're, and they're working with the imagination. Instead of working with truth, they're working with imagination, uh, and, and they're working with the principle. Okay, They're trying to establish their own principle as a pillar of truth Okay, uh, in the house of God. That's where you see so many denominations. Okay, These are... Uh, these are uh, these are men trying to establish their own principle, okay, and then using precept and line to, from the scripture in order to try to shore up that principle, okay, and to claim that as truth, and then they build a house around it, okay, that's, that's a denomination, that's a church, okay. Now, the Lord uh, allows that, okay, he authorizes that activity for the gathering of the tares, okay, it's the bundling of the tares, that they're being grouped together, so those are like, those are like bundles, okay. Uh, those of a feather flock together, and they're being bundled together. 